Santland, the land of Sant. Hello and welcome everybody, Chris Beck with yet another special fragrance review. Why special? I tell you why. Because um, we are reviewing today, you and me, we, we are taking a look at the latest release from the precious house of Norton and Wilson um, called Bon Vive. Okay, and why is it special still, you could ask? It's special because obviously um, the, the man behind, or one of the men behind this fragrance is Dan Norton, Mr. Smelly, um, whom uh, I've uh, been you know, following, watching for, for many years, and with whom I was, I was uh, invited and lucky and honored to have some common projects, some common reviews, um, which I basically very much enjoy to do each and every time we take a look at a different decade um, in regards to fragrances, okay? And um, I've reviewed uh, uh, Norton Wilson's uh, first fragrance, Gravitas, um, back last year in September. And uh, today it's a wonderful occasion to take a look at and deep dive into Bon Viveur, Le Nouveau Parfum Pour Homme by Norton and Wilson. Um, and first of all, the environment, right? And um, the setting where we are. Uh, it has very much a reason because this fragrance is something very elegant in a way that is humorous and sophisticated, okay? And so this is what I wanted to reflect with my attire and, and obviously with the setting we are uh, in today. So let's deep dive here. It says it's an eau de parfum and it's called Bon Viveur. Bon Viveur, the expression itself comes basically from, from the French uh, Bon Vivant, that is a person that enjoys you know, the good things, the, the luxurious things of life, but mostly it's, it's related to, to food and drinks, okay? Uh, a bon vivant, uh, or a bon viveur in this case, um, is somebody who appreciates the good things of life and celebrates them, okay, to the utmost, um, but always in a, in a sophisticated manner, knowing that um, sometimes less is more and overdoing things is probably uh, not that elegant, okay? Um, so with that in mind, let's take a look at the fragrance it itself. How does it achieve to smell like Bon Viveur? Bon Viveur. First of all, the, uh, naming this fragrance, and, and I know that Dan is very very keen on, you know, uh, the, the uh, traditional good old fragrances, and he's English as well, so, so, um, to then say, okay, let's 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 give this um, fragrance a name with a, with a French touch and, and and not call it something very English. That is all. That already shows that um, Dan himself is a very adventurous uh, type of guy who likes to likes to take a, uh, a look across borders and 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 takes in um, other cultural impacts into his life and indeed into his fragrances. So although this is a very much English type of um, fragrance, meaning where it comes from and who the people are, including the nose, John Stephen, who created uh, Bon Viveur and who created Gravitas as well. It's still something that reaches across and is manages to be very European, okay? So with that in mind, if you smell this fragrance, if you take a look at, at the um, note breakdown, and I don't want to bore you with it because it's, you know, you can read it on Fragrantica, but what comes to me immediately is that it's a fresh spicy aromatic fragrance, um, lemongrass, basil very much, um, herbal aspects of, of these two, but also the freshness of, of, of lime and, and maybe maybe some uh, mandarin orange there, um, some clove, um, a great gin note, um, and, and definitely cedar and, and definitely oak moss, and it's very complex um, it's it's it maintains a nice citrusy feeling it's refreshing okay it's it is very much refreshing but at the same time it's also almost immediately on my skin herbal and aromatic 
okay, which I love a lot because uh, lemon and lime and, and mandarin orange in itself, citrusy aspects can be, you know, can be very nice but short-lived. But if you, if you back them up with some lemongrass, with some basil, some clove, again, okma, cedar, and so on, gin, great gin note, um, then you get something that elevates uh, even the lemon, the fresh aspects onto a higher level. And that's what I totally get here. Sometimes due to the okmas, it's a bit sort of um, powdery, uh, but not overly so. It, it, it's not powdery in a way of, of, the, of the, you know, nowadays violet iris powdery based fragrances. It's, it's, it's a, this one is a classy powderiness, um, like talc powder or talcum. Um, it has an aspect of that. And that again calls into your into your mind, into your fantasy, the old days somehow. This is a very traditional uh, fragrance, a fragrance with a very traditional backbone. Yet, um, the Bon Viveur is not stiff. The Bon Viveur is not boring. The, the Bon Viveur is not old-fashioned in any uh, shape and form or shape or form, right? He's very lively, he's outgoing, he's humorous, he's intelligent, he's stylish, okay? So this, fra this fragrance, although it's, it has a traditional classy backbone, it's, it's very much living, okay? It's sparkling. And it does remind you of a few fragrances of this genre from the past. Um, classy ones, uh, classy ones from Chanel come into mind. Classy ones from uh, Dior come into mind. Even classy ones from, from uh, the very first Versace, Lomb, uh, the very, very first Versace for matte fragrance comes into my mind. It doesn't smell like those, but it has hints um, of these fragrances um, that I've mentioned, okay? It, it has this classy, citrusy, herbal, aromatic, fresh, spicy um, theme going on. But at the same time, I would never really call this um, dated or, again, old-fashioned, because it has a sparkle. Um, then I think that the, uh, the, the, the note of bay leaf, which is also included here, together with the lemongrass and the gin, um, are very much making possible. So, the, the, so these three, I think, majorly contribute to the fact that this never gets stuffy and, and, and old-fashioned and dated, okay? Very important because, you know, I know that Dan appreciates the, the, the old traditional fougere uh, fragrances, but you have to talk to the current market as well. And I think that's something that has been uh, very well conducted uh, in this work by John Stephen, um, that he really managed to reach across that border to, to, to stay classy and to stay stylish and, and sophisticated, but at the same time reach out to modern audiences and well and and always, and, and also um, make the newer audience, which obviously through uh, Dan's channel is very much present, make them aware of how um, and what the art was and, and how it is to to wear and smell and and um, experience a fragrance that had that has a very traditional. Um, fresh, spicy, aromatic backbone, like Monsieur uh, from Chanel, or Pour Monsieur from Chanel, or even Givenchy, or, or, or Sauvage comes into uh, mind from, from Christian Dior, and, um, and these type of fragrances, okay? Actually, there is one from Chanel that comes into my mind also, the, the, the Pour Monsieur Eau de Parfum from 2016. Now, what I want to say is that that this does not necessarily copy those, but plays in the same league, easily, at least, definitely, if we take a newer look, because it's kind of difficult to, to um, you know, compare this with fragrances like, like Pour Monsieur from Chanel from 1955, I think, or Eau Sauvage from Dior from 1967 or 66. It's, different, it's, it's difficult because these are fragrances that are 50, 60 years old, okay? So I don't wanna, don't wanna, uh, you know, um, you know, blow the balloon and then, and then create something which is at the moment in time, at this moment in time, is not comparable. But I can say that this is very much comparable to the Chanel release 
uh, pour monsieur eau de parfum used to be concentrated before from 2016 and what does what does this tell you it, it tells you that if you want uh, to make the effort if, if, if you have the courage um, if you have the means and um, and the, the the possibility to create something classy which is not necessarily following today's trends of, uh, of aquatic uh, fruity sweety ambrosan uh, tonka bean and uh, you know vanilla sweet fragrances or oceanic fragrances you can very much do it because this is not an obvious choice of today's uh, fragrance market out there. I mean, the, the users, the end user, okay? This is not something that, that a, probably a 20-year-old, 25-year-old would reach for. But then again comes the educational aspect that maybe, why not? Because it does not smell that something, uh, uh, not smell like something a 25-year-old couldn't wear. But the current trend, the current taste is, is, is not this direction, um, which again is talks and shows you signs of, of great courage to, to, to bring this to the market nevertheless. And so I can only uh, again applaud uh, Dan and um, his partner and obviously uh, John Stephen for creating uh, Bon Viveur because it very much is something that is having a great traditional backbone and at the same time manages to be very appealing, manages to have a great uh, presentation, fantastic heavy bottle, great sprayer, great uh, uh, box, great colors, great concept, okay, and it has a great performance as well, it, it's an order to, it's an order parfum, an order parfum, okay, and it performs accordingly, okay, so um, I could rave on, um, I'm very happy to see this, I'm very happy to own this, and I'm very happy to wear this. It's also very versatile. Um, due to the many notes that it has, it surprises you. Sometimes the bezel is a bit stronger, sometimes the oak moss. Uh, sometimes the gin with the lemon creates some sort of a gin tonic kind of uh, experience. So as an, olf uh, as an olfactive experience and, and a voyage, olfactive voyage if you will, this is also a great fragrance to wear because it, it shows you different facets of its being throughout the entire development of the fragrance. Okay. But without um, much further ado, I leave you with uh, Bon Viveur, le nouveau parfum pour homme par Motonavilson, parce que la vie est faite pour être appréciée. Merci beaucoup.